Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to edit default models that come with Smile Game Builder. We'll obviously start in Smile Game Builder. You'll go to Add Assets and then there is an export button here. We're going to export one of the tall models. It'll open up a folder automatically showing the contents it comes with the FBX file, which is the model, and two texture files. It also has a folder with the motion files, which were all FBXs in this case. After you have done that, you'll need to open up Blender. A lot of times in Blender, you'll be greeted by a cube. You can right click on the cube and hit X on your keyboard and select delete. Now we will import the model file We'll go to File, Import, FBX. You'll navigate to the location of your stored model and import it. The model files in Smile Game Builder are really small. You'll need to scale this up by going down to the Pivot Center and selecting 3D Cursor. Hit S on your keyboard and scale it up by 100. If you want to change the texture on the model, you can highlight the model by right clicking on it and going to the texture tab on the right side. Down here is where you can change the file that loads for the texture. You can select your file that you edited by clicking this folder button here under source and choosing the edited texture file. To see the texture applied to the model, you'll need to select in object mode. Right here next to the object mode button is a texture viewport shading. You'll select texture. If your texture is still not showing, you will need to create a new window for the UV mapping. This can be done by selecting the right upper hand side where you see these lines in the corner and dragging over to the left. The bottom, there's a selection here that you can choose to change to UV Image Editor. Having the model selected in object mode, you need to hit tab and it'll switch to edit mode. You can see the UV mapping on this side. You'll need to actually choose the image you want it to display down here by selecting this picture and selecting your texture and now you can see my edited texture on the model. Next we need to set the hand hooks for the model so that when you use the model in battle the objects that it's holding will show up in the proper hands. If you right click on them you'll see the name over here in this window on the right hand side. This one is the left hand hook so what we need to do is go to the object tab and we're going to set the parent of the object to the bone on the left hand. Right here where it has the cube you'll select root and then there's a drop down below it where you will select bone and the bone will be the left hand. And do the same thing for the right hand. But choose the right hand bone instead. You'll notice that they are way off away from the model. To get them centered back onto the bone, you can select the hook and hit Alt G on your keyboard. and do the same thing for the other one. These will snap them to the bones where they're supposed to be. If it seems like their rotation is off, you can select them and hit Alt-R. They're also very large. You'll need to scale them down to the proper size. You'll need to first change your pivot point back to median point, hit S on your keyboard, and scale 
start scaling it down. I like to scale it down to right about here. Sometimes you'll need to re-import the character to see how big the weapons are according to the hook point. You'll also need to move these back down to where the actual hand is. If you select the object and grab the blue arrow here, you can drag it down right to where the hand is so that the objects look like they are in the hands. Next, we're going to make a basic animation. Right here on Blender, you can choose your screen layout and switch it over to animation. This will make it easier to animate the object. I'm going to right click on the model to show the texture again under the texture option here. I like to do my animations in orthographic view. You can press 5 on your keyboard to switch between orthographic and user perspective. If you hit 1 on your number pad, it will go to the front of the object. If you hit 3 on your number pad, it will go to the side. I'm just going to lower the arms of this character to start with. Before we start animating, let's select the bones and go over to the armature tab on the right side. Let's select x-ray so that we can see the bones through the model. And then down here, we're going to switch to pose mode. I'm going to choose the shoulder bone here by right clicking. You can rotate this bone by hitting R on the keyboard. I want to rotate on the Y axis, so now I'm going to hit Y and it's going to lock it to the Y axis and then I can simply move my mouse up and down. And then when I'm done, I can hit left click and do the same thing for the other shoulder. Rotate, Y, drag down and click. I'm going to hit one on the keyboard just to see the front view. Now what I'm going to do is select all bones by hitting A on the keyboard. That will remove the selection, then A again will select every bone. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard and choose Location Rotation Scale. This will save a keyframe at the very beginning for this pose. You have a dope sheet that shows every single keyframe for the pose there. What I'm going to do is select a later frame at 30. What I'm going to do now is I want it to go back to the original position. I'm going to set the original position back by hitting Alt R on the keyboard and this sets the rotation back to the original position and I'm going to create another keyframe just by hitting I and choosing location rotation scale now I'm going to go back to this frame and with this position with my mouse in the 3d view I'm going to hit control C to copy this position then I'm going to go to six, the 60th frame and select or, and press Control V. That will paste that pose there, but I still need to choose I and select Location Rotation Scale. Now we can play this animation by dragging on the animation timeline here, and we can see that he is moving his arms up and down. Now that we have an animation on there, Let's export the model as an FBX file for Smile Game Builder. Before we export, we need to set the frames per second for this animation. That is going to be on the Renders tab, and you'll choose 60 FPS. We're going to go to File, Export, FBX. I'm just going to put in the folder that I had. 
and I'm gonna call this I'm just gonna call it edit 01.fbx it doesn't have to match the name of the texture file because you've actually chosen the texture file for it to use in the material itself now before you hit export we need to make sure that all the settings are proper for smile I have a preset already made for smile but if you do not you can change the scale to 0.01 you'll need to make sure that you have empty material and mesh highlighted we'll go over to geometries you'll need to set your settings like this on armatures your settings need to be like this and on animation your settings need to be like this you can pause the tutorial to copy these settings after you have all of those tabs set properly we can hit export Now what we are going to do is create a animation definition file. Create a new text document. We have to name it the same name as the model. It needs to be edit 01 and then you need to change this to instead of a dot text file it needs to be a dot def for definition we're going to change that if you do not have the option to change the extension of your file you'll need to go to organize folder and search options in Windows go to view and uncheck hide extensions for known file types that way you can change the extension or the type of file it is once you open the text file we're going to type in ANIM. This means for animation. And then we're going to set the frames for the animation we made. I'm going to call this flap. And we're going to, it is 1 through 60. And that is how you set the animation. We're going to now import this back into Smile Game Builder. Once you're back in Smile Game Builder, we're going to go back to Add Assets. We're going to make sure we're on the Characters tab, and we're going to click Add, and import our FBX file. Now, if you scroll down to wherever it should be alphabetically, your model should be there. Now, since there was already motions made for this character, they should all import properly but we also have now the flap animation now as you can see it's not flapping that is because we did not set the animation to loop all you have to do is open it back up and put a loop tag at the end this will make the animation loop. You will need to re-import your characters. Now we should have a looping flap animation. All right. Those are the basics on editing a character for Smile Game Builder. Have fun and happy game building.